Hi everyone, this is Lucy from Sweet Poppy. Um, this is one of the demonstrations that I wanted to show on her channel. This is using Shower of Love and um, some oxide sprays and showing that you don't have to use mediums if you don't want to, the stencil mediums. You can just use your inks. So, to start off with, let's pop that to one side. So I have a lot of this prepped, okay? So we're using, um, as I said, we're going to be using SP1309, the Shower of Love um, beautiful stencil that's designed for us by Tracy Dutton from Lavinia Stamps. Um, and it is just beautiful. Um, I know that it went a little bit crazy on TV and um, sold out quite a bit. So let me just move my prep bits out of the way because I'm going to be getting inks and sprays and they do tend to coat everything and anything in its view. So, okay, so excuse the size of the frames because I've already sprayed quite a few frames in... Um, the vintage photo and also Victorian velvet, but I don't really want any more, but I want to show you how I got the finish. So to start off with, let me just turn everything over. So to start off with, I've got a mount um, and I've got two pieces of card. And this way, normally I do it in a big box. This way you can guarantee on um, how you're going to get your finish. So just for this purpose, I'm going to be using um, old paper, uh, fossilised amber, and I've got vintage photo because I'm running out of some of my sprays. They are on order again. Um, and sorry if they're, they're not on the website, but um, obviously it's just really just the purpose of showing you how I got the um, effect. So, with oxides, they are a little bit frustrating, but they're fabulous. So, clean off, and you will find that they are blocked, some of them, quite easy. So, you've just got to be patient with them. So, I tend to wrap them, spray. Probably not the right way of using, but I have to say, I like the finish that I get. Okay, come on. Let's go in with the amber. So this is a newish one, this one is. Hence, that's why it's so good. So again, I've given them a good shake previously. I do want a little bit more of that vintage photo, and I know I've got a bit of it in there. So, come on. Look for me, not against me. You could, if you don't want to use your sprays, what you could do is you could use your pads. Um, you know, that will still give you the beautiful effect. He's almost dying, bless him. Right, okay, so we'll work with the other ones. Because I've got, as I said, I've got a lot of it prepped. So, I tend to spritz. And then what I tend to do is I move my ink around with a bunched up piece of card. And I'll layer, dry, layer, dry, layer, dry, until I'm happy that I've got the effect that I want. Okay. Um, a little bit more green in there. Because I've got plans for this, these backgrounds. First, so make sure everything is covered because it, they do, they travel, um, which is frustrating when you realise that you've sprayed over um, good work. Okay, I can always go over the top with. So, as you can see, you're just building, and then what you need to do is give it a blast. Now, Drying between the layers as well will totally change it. So you're just building, and this is how I got my backgrounds for um, this particular demonstration. So we're just, and that's so pretty. So, as you can see, you're getting a nice bit of coverage. You could, if you wanted, 
and just blast it with a heat gun and that will because they're uh, they've got a dye base inside them they're hybriding um, they will you know you can take away the ink so if you're happy with what you've got obviously we're limited on time and everything let's put the lids on and pop those to one side and then I can clean up so these will go to one side and these will be dried for a future project because I know what's coming in um, for the next run of stencils and I think that would look fabulous on one of them so clean off and I need a complete clean so I'm making sure I've got no dregs of yellow Fabulous. So we're totally clean. So I have dry prepped. So I've got a frame that's already dry. I've got a piece of backing card, and all I do is that gets attached to that. Okay. So that then is my mount, and that will fit in any frame for you because it is. Um, I'll put the dimensions on the post. Um, but I believe it is uh, the frame size is 20 by 25.5, and, and I'm not 100% sure on what the size is of the internal. Um, excuse my measuring, I haven't got my ruler to one side. Uh, no, that's not going to do it. I will, as I said, I'll put the posts and um, the dimensions for you. So, we've already got our hairs. So this is Shower of Love with the two beautiful hairs on. And I've already prepped a little bit. So underneath here, I've got some red hearts. Okay. So, I've got black ink. Now, you could use your archivals or you could use your VersaFinds or whatever black ink that you've got because I'm not going to go over the top of this. Um, it's up to you what you use. So, I need my sponge. Okay. So, all you're going to do is you're going to gently, because you've got a very fragile bit here that is not bridged. So, none of this because what will happen is you'll snag it and it will damage. I'm actually going to go in with a bit of a spine because it might be quicker because my archivals need re-inking. So we're just sponging and I'm just building my layers up. You don't want to over flood it because what will happen is if you over flood it, it's got nowhere else to go but bleed through. So try and do layer by layer by layer by layer so you're keeping the mask on over the red hearts as i said i'd already prepped a lot of this um previous to um starting and i've used for my red i used uh, adirondack cranberry but you can use any as i said i would say that you would need to dry this uh, with the red because i'm going to go over with glossy accents for the red hearts so what would happen is um, it will bleed everywhere. So I'm after one of my stencil brushes. And I normally have loads and loads here. Uh, sorry about this, guys. Don't seem to have a red. Let's have a look. There we go. Got it to hand. Do apologise. So I'm just going in so I can get into all the little nooks and crannies of it. Now also what I would normally have, which I did have a little while ago to one side, is a black fine liner. Um, and really important with your black fine liner is that um, any little bits that you miss, you can just draw up. So don't stress over it. So again, I'm going in and I'm taking more ink and I'm going on. And the brush, I use a stubby end brush because I find that it just gets into all the little nooks and crannies for you. Um, all the fine little detail of what trace is drawn for us, it will reach and it will get in for you. So, 
going down the stem and again if you're pasting with this one I tend to paste straight the way down that way I just find it works for me if you find it's easier to come up this way there's no right or wrong way because you've got a lot of parts that are um, not joined it's you know if you find a stencil doesn't work when you're stenciling with medium turn it around try it a different way um, that's what I tend to do when we've got the stencils in I'll have a little play and see what works best for me and then that's when you know customers will ask what's the best way for it this is why we don't have the um, directions engraved onto the stencil because you're never sure until they come in which way it works the best so we're going in and we're making sure we're covered so popping my inks to one side and that one to one side and of course clean hands because it's a nightmare because I always get fingerprints over everything so I'm taking off my stencil now most important is if you've used a permanent ink then it's not just going to come off with water so you'll need something like a stamp cleaner or um, even hand sanitizer will lift it off or you could use um, uh, oh gosh I can't think um, you could use nail varnish remover it's not going to hurt them so my hearts I think are not red enough so what I would do is I would clean that and then go back to it and put my red hearts on. I'm going to just see if I've got a another one here. I tend to have a couple of them floating around. So I've got another one because I tend to have a little stash of poorly ones that haven't um, made quality check. So we are... So what happened is um, when the tape's been over it since yesterday it's dragged the ink out so I'm just loading up a little bit matching up there we go quite happy with that I only want the hearts but you can guarantee that I will go a little bit OTT and get it where I don't want it so I'm just masking off so the parts that haven't had the black, I'm not too bothered about that because what's going to happen is I can go over that with a little red that's probably still got some of the, the red on it. I'm just touching up my red, okay? So I'm giving them in effect a couple of layers. So just making sure that Got nice red, deep red cranberry hearts. There we go, lovely. Okay, so again, lift up, stencil off. That looks a little bit better. So pop that to one side, and have a bit of TLC, and then with the pen, let's take that off. I don't need my magnetic sheet anymore. So what I'm doing is I'm touching up the lines that aren't 100% clear. And again, so you know, just a little black pen, just to match up and go over any lines that are not as clear as what you wanted them to be. Now, what is important is you need to dry it with a heat gun um, because, especially with your red hearts, just checking my little beautiful bunnies. Well, they're hairs, not bunnies. And I'm going in with my dots where I've not taken the time. You'll take the time. So you'll build your layer and layer and build and build until you're happy. There we go. There we go, that's better. So, blast it with heat gun. Excuse the heat gun whilst I give it a blast. Thank you. 
Okay. So what we've done then is glossy accents. Now, if your card curls, just run it through um, a machine. If you've got an embossing machine, run it through an emboss uh, embossing machine. So with my lovely glossy hearts, I always go around the outside. So this is glossy accents. I find if I went over with translucent, it won't give me the rays that I need. So with the glossy accents, I can have real rich beautiful almost like cherry hearts so just make sure you don't get any bubbles in like I have you get a pin and you'd pierce them so again do your three hearts so on my hearts I gave um, they had three layers of glossy accents so you do have to wait for it to dry between each layer so it's an overnight job um, but it is worth the wait, especially if it's something, an anniversary card or, you know, that, that special to say I love you. So we're just building up. So we're going over the three hearts. Lovely. I'll quicken it up so that we can get it all on the video. And you would leave that dry. Okay. So let me just wipe my tip of my glossy accent so it doesn't lock. So pop that to one side, overnight job. Make sure you've got no bubbles and then leave it dry. So pop that to one side. So here's my body I've got prepped. So my frame, which is backed on, and then my glossy hearts. Okay, I don't know if you can see how glossy they are. They are beautiful. So I've matted and layered this onto um, cardstock so that it pings it out a little bit. So I have got a very fine border of black and then I've got a bit of craft card. And because I want to make sure this sits in, I'm just going to stand up and make sure that it, because I'm very well known for putting the, everything on a wonk. I really like this one. Sometimes I do something that I think, oh, it's lovely. So you could stamp your backgrounds, you could, you know, enhance it if you wanted, it's up to you. But I think that is just so pretty. But as I said, I will take pictures and I'll post this um, on there. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. This is Shower of Love. Um, and it's so pretty. Thank you.